Okay, good morning everybody and thank you for logging into our Keep the Quick live stream. Uh, we're, we're doing this regularly from now on and we'll be testing different equipment for you. So if you want uh, any equipment testing, then of course you can comment and we can plan that for future events. But today we're kicking off with Tom Bentham from Rationale, who's going to be showing us uh, the SCC to start with, and he'll be talking about a few benefits from that and how you can cook different things in it and the different benefits of the self-cooking centre. Uh, as part of Gold the Loyalty, we've got Rationale up here um, to help us out with this, um, and we'll be um, cooking lots of different things, so over to you, Tom. Thank you very much, Holly. So, as Holly said, we're here to support one of our gold dealers, and we're doing this little web thing to cover some training aspects, different things that you can maybe do and utilise using your self-cooking centre. Got a nice little menu to go, but we're open to any questions, um, and we'll try and answer them as quickly as possible. Um, as I said, a couple of different things. The first thing we started off with is a little overnight roast. So this is one of our sort of one of my favourite personal processes for using the self-cooking centre. It goes through sort of using the unit overnight, especially great if you've got electric units. If you've got gas unit, you do need to leave the extraction on, but you can turn it right down. There's a few benefits with using this, and this is one of our ICC processes. So we abbreviate everything at most opportunities. Um, ICC stands for an intelligent cooking control, and this will go through a variety of different stages, climates and environments to give us the best, most effective cooking result every time. The rationale can think about the size of the product and also the volume that's in it to give us a consistent, high quality product at every time. So what we've got in here is we've got just a little bit of rump that I put in this morning, so it doesn't have to be overnight, it's just a much slower process to go through the cooking style. So we've gone through a variety of different stages. First of all, I'll just show you our dummy panel. So down here is basically the heart of the Rationale Self-Cooking Centre system. And this is the onboard computer from the inside of the unit. All I did this morning when I came in is we went into meat, and then I came down into one of the options here, which is overnight roasting. Once I selected overnight roasting, it'll load up and it'll bring you into the screen where you can choose your cooking parameters. I left it on the default ceiling and brought the temperature down to 58, which will give us a nice pink sensor in the center of our product. If it was a larger piece of meat, it's just going to take a longer time to cook through. This one's taken about two hours, and now it's on its final stage, which is mature and hold. Mature and hold is a really, really good part of this process. It's safe to hold in here for 24 hours, and it also helps with the aging. So every hour the product is on mature and hold is the equivalent of an additional 24 hours dry aging. So it helps break down the collagens and the proteins to make it more tender. I'm just going to open the door, which is what we do when we come in in the morning. I'm just going to take the probe out of the product. So we can lift that out. There's six sensors on the probe, so when I've inserted that, I've made sure I've got as many of them into contact with the product as possible. I'm just going to pop that down there in the little probe holder. So I'll take this out. Pop it on the little tray. And you might also notice at this time that I've put a little gastro over the bottom. Whenever we're using any of the processes, we'll always recommend a style of tray or rationale accessory to help you get the most out of it. When we're doing something like an overnight roast, we'll always cook on the wire rack to help increase that air circulation around the product. This also helps get a better sear on it, which gives you more flavour out of your product at the end. We always pop a little tray in the bottom, and the reason for this is it's going to collect any of the juices or anything like that. So you can put bones or mirepoix in there, so chopped up onions, carrots, celery, garlic, the usual trinity of veg, it's going to help roast them off and then it'll hold them. It also saves making a mess out of the unit of anything that could drip off the trays as well as retaining that flavour. I'm going to pop this down here. Pop that on the end. Pop that on too. I'm just going to come back and bring it back to the main screen. Take that off. As well, by using the slower cooking process, it allows us to get more portions out of the meat. So it affects basically what gets abbreviated to as the bullseye effect, but where you get rings of searing. It simplifies this by colouring it at the beginning and then using a very slow cooking process. This can also reduce your shrinkage by up to 22%, which gains more profit for you at the end of the day. So have you ever seen the overnight cooking process before, Holly? Uh, not really, actually, but I didn't know about it. Uh, it's very clever how we can sort of save you a lot of money without with the meat shrinkage. So definitely can help. 
got another three down, a few leaves to make everything pretty. So first of all, we've got our first dish there, just a nice little bit of sort of Sunday roast. So you would come in in the morning and have all your meat joints sort of cooked off and prepared all the way through, just as an advantage, it saves you time and it allows you to use the unit 24 hours a day through the monitoring system. I just put this on the side so Holly can have a try. She's our wonderful volunteer here to taste everything today. Yeah, the so chicken, poultry, turkey, all these different things. There's a different process in the self-cooking center for these. So for something like poultry, we'd come into our poultry option and then we can come into the overnight roasting function here. You can also tie pork in with poultry. So it might be that you have say a pork belly in there as well as sort of a turkey breast. This can work quite well. And you can also get a follow-on option. So we can add additional cooking time to the environment. So when it finishes the overnight process, we come into the cooking parameter cockpit, we can come all the way to the end, push the question mark, it'll show you that there's the option of crisping up. So it's just a little option to put the craft in onto the product right at the very end. Pop this to one side. Thank you. Tender, very well obviously that now taste it here, but yeah, it's just really nice and it's um, succulent. You know, it's not dried out or anything like that with the convection oven that you would get to have to dry it out to make Yeah, considering you can hold it in there for up to 24 hours, it's going to keep all that moisture in. It's not going to overcook it because it's going to manage the temperature inside the cooking environment. So it helps you all the way through all those stages. Just have a quick little clean up and then we'll move into our next sort of stage of things. But ICC processes or intelligent cooking controls really are the heart of giving you the maximum and highest quality. And we're going to use a few of these today to have a nice look at the different styles of products that we can produce. And these can be great for whether you're doing functions, whether you're doing things like sponge cakes, baking breads, different proving options. There's a path for near enough everything that you might possibly need to do inside the unit. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at doing a little bit of a breakfast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the door to here. And I built a couple of programs earlier this morning, so we're just going to come into notes. Just going to select to come into breakfast. I'm going to drag the first item down. So again, what happens here is an intelligent level control. This is where we set the climate inside the Rationale Self Cooking Center to one consistent temperature, moisture, and humidity all the way through. The processes maintain a consistent environment at all times. And because of this, we can then build timers to cook our products as required. So it gives you that flexibility and freedom. So we can save on a lot of different pieces of equipment. So we're going to look at a little breakfast here. Again, I'll just show you on this unit. Let me get the glare off it. But we can come into programs, select an option that we built as a basket, and it'll load it up. So it loads us different tiles that we can drag and drop onto the screen. So to go into our breakfast, I've got some mushrooms and some tomatoes. Some nice smoked bacon and some sausages. We've got some eggs, which we're also going to do in there. As well as doing some toast. Uh, so yeah, we've got a question from Melody. So does the overnight cooking help with staff other than the chef being able to start the Sunday lunch out, for example? So can anybody start of coming in and yeah, so, so anyone can load it in and then it's ready for the next stage. It's going to stay in there in a safe environment and hold for 24 hours. The big advantage from sort of a production point is that when your chef comes in, the first job's done. But if it's a breakfast member staff, they can come in and cool it down. You could chill it down the day before and slice it cold and regenerate it later for service. It really just offers and opens up the amount of time you can do your cooking. So instead of just being able to traditionally only be able to cook, so on a Sunday morning when I used to work at the hotel, we used to come in in the morning at sort of six o'clock, breakfast chef, first job, we get all the meat in for the day. And you've got that huge pressure. You're trying to do breakfast and trying to do a variety of different other things and all these other options. So I'll just pop this onto a tray and we can just load this up ready to go in. Can you use any tray kind of for, for this, or would you recommend anything? You can use a variety of different trays. I tend to use, or we use the Rationale accessories. 
The main reason for this is that they help give better flavor, um, sorry, color transfer and give you a better product out at the end. So we've got two different styles of trays here we're using. Any tray covered in the black has a special patented rationale formula called Trilax, which is just a really high grade version of sort of Teflon. It allows you to get a quicker heat transfer because of the thinner alloy inside the trays, but also allows it to maintain non-stick, which allows us to use it like a frying pan. So we can use these, and these are probably one of the most versatile trays that we have. So we can do all sorts, but they're great for croissants, danishes, and any baking products, different pastry bits, but you can also use them for, so we'll use them for bits of chicken later on and a variety of different other options. Pop our bits on that. And then last but not least, we've just got one of our multi-baker trays. So again, this is a Trilex coating. We use this for our fried eggs, but you can use it for pancakes. You can do with little drop scones in it. It's great for little tartlets, so you can just press the pastry discs in, fill them, and just bake them through that way. And it just helps you. It's another style. They're just a little sunken well. So what we're going to do, we're just going to fill it with a little bit of oil, which allows us to replicate the frying environment. And I'm just going to crack these eggs. I believe you can poach them as well. Would you use the same clothes you were poaching, poaching the eggs? So if you're poaching eggs, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can use a tipping mold and um, wrap the egg in cling film and then just steam it through that way at a lower temperature. Or alternatively, you can um, poach them just straight in the actual eggshell itself. So you can go straight in on either a steamer tray or sort of a wire rack. I have a wire rack, which is good. Um, I'll use it for that then. What that allows you to do is it just increases that air circulation around the product, but you can poach them in the shell about 75 degrees for between 12 and sort of 15 minutes, depends on egg size, sort of 12 minutes for a medium room temperature egg, and then you can just crack them out. They're similar to a sort of sous vide egg. Of course, you can go for lower temperatures, but you need to make sure that you go through the pasteurization points for those cooking times. So the rationale here is still communicating that it's still in that preheat setting the environment. And the grill setting that we're using here is about 240 degrees with about 20% natural resistant humidity. So it's going to take away 80% of the moisture that this breakfast creates, but it's going to keep it a nice constant environment for our cooking. You got any more questions? Or how are we doing? It seems to be quite lively. There's a few things coming through. There are a few questions coming on. So Lily's asked which accessories are best for which cooking methods. So, so what sort of, Lily, what sort of cooking accessories or what sort of methods are you looking for? When it's going to be something like pan frying, we'd use sort of the black trays, or if you've got something like a braise or something, you're going to need a deeper tray. So, for example, the granite enamel here, 60 mil deep, just offers you that ability for deeper dishes like braises. Again, you could do these overnight, so you can have your production done that way through. But we offer a large variety of different trays and accessories, so I believe you are loaning them out. Uh, yeah, so I'll just introduce our accessory stand that we've got here. So we are going to let this to our customers who aren't sure which accessories they might use. So the idea is you'll, you'll pay a small deposit to get the, the unit, and we'll sort of put the code on the, on the unit so you can see which is which, and you can try anything you want on the on the stand. We've got the majority of the accessories on here, but if there's any specific ones that you want to add to it, we can't always get them for you. And then you can then obviously get back to us which accessories you use the most and we can provide them for you and then we'll obviously take the accessory stamp back off you and you'll have the trays that you want because obviously you don't want to get all the buy all your accessories that you don't know what you're going to use and then not use them so it's best to use this first so if you get in touch with us you can obviously loan this out from us that's the idea with that well there is there's a large range of accessories on there and i'll come on to some of them later on as we go so first off now the rationale is buzzing so let us know that it's ready to load so i've told it that i'm going to put our bacon onto shelf four once we open the door as well, the lights on the inside here, if we can see it, will just indicate exactly which shelf we need to load them onto. So I can just pop our bacon straight onto that shelf. I'm also going to add some additional products as well, so we'll get the rest of the roll in so we've got our sausages. So when I shut the door now, it'll start the timer on our bacon. I'm going to select our sausage option, and I'm going to select to put it onto shelf number two. We've also got our tomatoes and mushrooms, so I'm going to pop them in. Just load them in on shelf number six. And then I'm just simply going to drag our timer down and assign it to that shelf. So I've not got to remember all the products. You can also do things like hash browns and stuff using our coffee fry basket, which is one of the accessories on the side here. This is basically a special rationale developed pattern. Again, 
which has helped create the, increase the airflow around the product. So it allows you to use things like pre-bought in chips, um, hash browns and different things without using fryers. They're cleaner, they're healthier, but you're also not heating as many pieces of equipment. So in a traditional breakfast, you could have your stove on for your fried eggs, we could have bacon under the grill, sausages in the oven, so we're already looking at three pieces of fryer, four, and start suddenly very quickly you've got the whole kitchen on when you only need one piece of equipment. And again, that's saving you all the money, the time, the ease. Also the space in the kitchen, if you've got a small kitchen and you get a rationale, you won't need all the other equipment in there. So, you know, small kitchen is ideal, isn't it? Yeah, it reduces space. I mean, we do a small one, so as you can see the little side here, the rational access. Some people do them in their homes, um, which are very nice. You know, it's just a more, more small and more compact unit, which can be used on the back. So, so sorry, we just got a question from Kelly. So the, the egg tray that you've got there, can you can that do Yorkshire puddings in there? You can do Yorkshire puddings in those as well, so you can preheat them through. Um, we don't have a proper Yorkshire pudding set, setting actually on the unit, but there is a process that we can use that works really well, um, which is cream puffs and eclairs. So again, it's an ICC process. So we come into baking, and we come into cream puffs and eclairs, which is in the top right-hand corner. And then just bring the time down to about 20, 22 minutes, depends on your recipe. You can always add a bit more time, so when you're doing the testing, just reduce the time down, because you can always add a bit more cooking on. We'll pop our toast in. And again, because the rationale is managing all the humidity and moisture, it's still at a temperature where we can do our toast. So again, I can just drag and drop and assign that to our shelf. Now, I don't know whether you can see it from there, but a little message just popped up on the screen, so the residual time is adjusted. And this is another great thing of using intelligent level control. Every time I open the door, it stops all the timers. So we've stopped our cooking. But we've let all the heat out, as you can see. When we shut our door, it adds on time to compensate. The longer the door's open and the more heat that escapes, the more time it will add on. So it's just giving you that consistency. You've not got to keep coming back. The rationale will cook your product as you've asked it to every time and give you that consistency across. So this, uh, this so breakfast is pre-saved into the rationale when you, when you buy it off the shelf? There is a breakfast program on there. But everyone's breakfast is slightly different. It depends on the style of bacon you use, what, how thick your sausages are. So it tends to be something that we program in ourselves, um, and you make it custom. Programming is very, very simple on the Rationale Self Cooking Centre. There's a little note at the bottom of the screen. So to save an ICC process, we literally come in and select what we want. So if we came into meat and we came into our overnight roasting setting, right down here, one next to the little back arrow is a little note where we can almost write down. Press that button and it brings us into a page where we can name it. So I'll just call this Tom because it's nice and easy for me. So we can type that in. And then we just press the little tick. And that then saves that in its first stage. And that saves all the information we need for that process and program that. The next time we want to access it, instead of having to go back through all the different things, we can come into the little notebook at the bottom, which is where our programs are saved. And then as you can see, one of the three at the bottom here we can load up and that loads our program. So it gives you that consistency. The intelligent level controls are a little more advanced. We save them from the ILC option. So if we come into meet, the two options at the bottom will always be the intelligent level control options. So we can select that we want to come into grill and we can set our environment. The environments all have to be the same to give it that consistency. We can't do temperature zoning, but it will roll through. Select the amount of time and again press the note to save it. Once we name our program, we can press the tick and then it'll save. We can then load these up and we can also add them in. Because the screen's a bit small here, there is more information. We have a support app um, which you can just search for Rationale uh, or again, you can contact you and you'll pass details on for. Yeah. But this just is full of training videos and different bits of information. So if you want to look at programming or you do want to see more information on cleaning, all that information is there on the app. And if you just search Rationale, it comes up all things code uh, and download that. That's all in there. There's a lot of support on the, the app, isn't there? But you get um, pre training, don't you? So, so anyone, yeah. anyone can come out and help you with the rationale if you want to change the menu or you want to change the menu, so you can um, call us and we can get rationale to come out. Or you've got a chef line as well, do you want to explain the chef line? So, yeah, every time you buy a unit, you get a unit introduction. So, one of our rationale chef team will come out and visit you. And they'll take you through everything that works, all the programming, all the cleaning, and go through everything like this. Of course, you've got the app. There's also the chef line number. So 24-7, 365 days a year, you can contact us directly and speak to us about your chefing issues. And then we also run Rational Academies. So we run training events all over the north of the UK in the corporate chef team. And they tend to be about three hours, and they go through a variety of different things. 
You can find out more information about where these events are by connecting Cooking. Or well, there's also the Cook Live events with our sales team where they can go through and they can also cover all the information you need regarding any of these processes. So it calls. So we can come over now and we can see. So it's got two shelves that are finished. And it's highlighted through. Again, once I open the door, it's going to indicate to us with the lights on the side exactly which shelf needs to come out. So first of all, we've got our baking. So just bring this down. And then we've also got our tomatoes and mushrooms. Again, just pop the door to, and the rationale will compensate for me opening the door for time whilst to have way everything through that way. So while you're serving that up, Tom, um, we've got an interesting question from Salsa Jenny. Can you sterilize glass wherever you live? You can, um, because it will boil water, so just like a normal steamer. You can set it up, you can set a timer in. Um, I'm not 100% sure on the temps, it depends on how thick your glass is, you just have to make sure that it comes up to temperature. But yes, you can use the steam just to sterilize it through. Um, I'd probably do them upside down just so that it doesn't collect any water or condensation that gathers on the product when it heats. But you can gather it all through that way. So I'm just move these over. Again, we've got our sausages. Our toast is coming through here. And if I just slice this, hopefully you'll be able to hear just how crisp that is. Again, longer if it's a sort of a, a brown bread or so, and it might colour quicker. That was about three and a half minutes. But it really depends on what sort of product you want to finish with. If it's a bigger, thicker slice, it's going to take possibly a little bit longer as it goes through. Just watch that one back. There we go. And then I'm just going to add a little bit more time onto the eggs. So I'm just going to pop the door to, and we we'll to drag our timer down, sign it back to the shelf. What we can do is we can just select on the item, and then we've got the ability to increase or decrease the time. So really, this offers you exactly the same uses or some of the additional uses of sort of manual mode, but with more flexibility, more timers, and the ability to use the probe and the timer at the same time. So it just gives you a more consistent product as we go through. Okay, Jenny's on the last as well. Is there a specific tray that you'd use to sterilize the last drink? I'd probably use sort of like a steamer tray, so something that's generated, just so it's going to hold it. But also the holes will allow the air to circulate straight around the product. The big thing with you're going to look at doing that is just making sure you get that full air circulation around the product to sterilize it all the way through. So again, there's our nice quick sort of easy rationale breakfast. I'll just pass that to Holly again. Did you know you were going to get us well fed today when you Not signed up for this? So the water injection system for the combination of them, there's a couple of different styles um, with combi ovens. We use a water injection system what that basically means is that there's a big freshwater kettle that we permanently are ready to inject fresh hygienic steam from. So where the water spritz the system, there's a hot element that we, we would fire water onto and that creates steam inside the cabinet. Repose with the water injection system. Behind here, this big kettle, we push water in at the top. And we then cycle it through the unit using the fan and then we take it away through the vent at the bottom. So we're permanently putting fresh steam in, which means you don't get any flavor transfers. It's a cleaner, more hygienic way of cooking. Is this quite unique for a rationale? Or? There are other combi ones that do use a steam injector system. It is the best way to produce it through. Yeah. Um, but it's something rationale have adopted and have used ever since. Yeah. Let's just check my list. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of roast chicken. This is personally one of my favorite processes for showing off how great the rationale self cooking sensor is. So some of our key accounts use these sort of processes. It's really, really good for large functions or banquets. 
Um, in opposed to traditional techniques where you piece the frat pan up and then seal them all off and then lift them off and sort of assign them through, it just gives you the ability to sort of seal it, roast it, and cook it all in one stage, one simple process through. So first of all, we're going to come into our poultry option. We'll come into roasted chicken, although you can use pan fry. Like, select the default coloration, which I'm just going to leave on. And there's a little rationale logo at the top, which just gives you an idea of where we'd like to start. So if you're new to them or you don't know what you're going to use, this is always a good guide. But once you know what products you've got, you can then change it. So I'm going to bring the temperature down. I'm actually going to cut my chicken to 72 degrees. Because by the time it's rested, it'll go through that 75 degree mark. And it was a really nice, juicy, soft, and crispy chicken. We're going to use the roasted and baking tray again, which is going to allow us to use it as a pan. So what I'll do is I'll put one chicken skin side down, and I'll put one skin side up, and we can see the difference in the coloration. But against the traditional tray, so if you had a big, thick, deep gas drain, it's going to circulate that air through. So it's buzzing now to let me know we're ready. So we've got our chicken breasts. Pop a glove on. Now I haven't put any oil or salt or anything on this product. It's just as it is, so it's just a simple plain chicken breast. Pop one skin side down, one skin side up. Thank you very much. We'll bring it over to the Rationale self cook Center. Again, it doesn't matter where we put it, because that pan is going to push and balance the heat all the way around. Just going to take the probe now. And again, because he's got six sensors in, I'm going to make sure I get as many of them into contact with the product as possible. So rather than coming in through the top, I'm going to come in through the side and make sure I get all those sensors in the product. As long as we pass through the thickest part, It'll cook all those sensors and make sure they all hit 72 all the way. There we go, Holly. This is the breakfast tasting good. It is. It's very nice. It's, it's quite good on the egg. You know, it's silvery and you can have it exactly how you want. You can, you know, set it to me. To yeah, you're in control. control. You know, it's your personal preference. It's how you want it. I personally, with the eggs, always put them under another tray. It convects heat and just helps that coloration on top. But depending if you want a harder egg or a softer egg, it's completely up to you. So again, with our chicken, once the probe's in, pop the door to, and it's going to load itself up. It's going to work out what's going on. And this is how an ICC program works. So an ICC, or an intelligent cooking control, will go through those various different stages. So if we come down to the dummy panel down here, and again, we can come into poultry. If you're unsure where you're going, you can always use the question mark. So all the information on the Rationale Self Cooking Center is built under the question mark. Every time you push it, it'll be a page in the manual that you need. There's also all the safety warnings under the little exclamation mark, and next to that is the manual cookbooks. So there's the application, the manual, and also the uh, manual recipe book. And these give you all the information you could ever need about the self-cooking sensor. So we can select the user manual, and there's just pages and pages of bedtime reading. All the information. But that's too much to maybe take in. You're in a rush and you need it. So every time we change the page and we push the question mark, it'll bring up that exact page in the process. So for example, here we're on the poultry option, and we've loaded it up. I know you can't quite see it on that screen but it'll bring up the information about each of the tiles or the different processes on here. So first of all, we've got our roasted chicken. So for, for the preparation of whole chickens or large poultry pieces such as um, chickens, guinea fowl, pusa, but also large poultry pieces such as legs or half poultry products. So an ICC doesn't know what it's getting. It could be a whole chicken. It could be a single breast like the example we have here. It's going to calculate and work all that out. So the first thing it'll do once it's preheated and loaded through is it's going to do a pro position check. So we'll bring it over to the cockpit mode, and if I push the little eye, it'll give us the information of exactly what it's doing at this time. So the first thing it's doing is it's working out how big the product it's in is cooking. It can use that information to calculate what it needs to do next. So it'll take that and it'll work out if it's just cooking, say, two single breasts. Once it's worked out the size of the product, it'll work out the volume inside the unit. But we use a variety of different environments. So traditionally, if you're going to cook a chicken breast, you'd probably use 180 degrees. That's about six. Pop the chicken breast in if you've not sealed it, somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes to get it up to temperature. A process like this tends to take between sort of 14 and 16. So it's telling us now that it's made its first adjustment. It's taken 13 minutes, 42 seconds of our cooking time. And it's telling me that it's going to be done in 11 minutes. So it's already working its way through all of these processes. It started off at 230 degrees with 90% steam. So we're using a high humidity to almost poach this chicken, and that helps us hold more flavor in, keep it more juicy, and also reduce our cooking time. As it goes through this process, it's going to reduce the temperature and reduce that steam before finally coming over into a drier environment. So at the moment, it's projected it's going to be about 240 degrees with 50% natural humidity maintained inside the unit. 
So we're going to just actively dehumidify 50%, take away 50% of the moisture that the product in here creates. We'll take that out through the back of the unit, and that will allow us to get that really nice crisp without drying our product out. Yeah. Uh, we've got more questions, so I'll have to look yeah. then. So Melody's asking, uh, why would you use self-cooking center over a coffee master, and what would you recommend for a chef? So it depends how you're going to cook. We offer three different units. We've got the Combi Master, the Combi Master Plus, and the Rationale Self Cooking Center. They're all for relying on different technologies. So the Combi Master and the Combi Master Plus are both manual, so you don't get any of the technology behind the Self Cooking Center. So you're always good with that information and technology. But if you just want to steam, you might not need all of this information. The processes can help you run things through. They also make it better, and if it calls up to 10 days worth of passivator as standard, or we connect your cooking so much more in a minute, you can hold up to six months worth of data in a cloud over Germany. You can also view that through a PDF graph. So it gives you a huge amount of information, and it really future-proofs your kitchen. The other piece of equipment we've got is the Vario Cooking Center, and that does exactly the same. And in tandem, you're starting to get to the stage where everything you cook records itself. So all that information about all your processes, all your recipes, are stored and logged, which really gives you that consistency. But if you're just looking at steaming, and you don't need anything else, or you're just looking at using certain sort of manual environments, you can just use the Combi Master, again, budgets and so on and so forth. It runs through to what your needs are. It might be that you stack them, so you have a six grid on steam, and then you have a 10 grid on, say, a self cooking sensor. So, sorry, the bottom one is a Combi Master or a Combi Master Plus, and then the top one is a self cooking sensor. Yeah, so does the Combi Master Plus then, does that have a download? Yep, so all the Combi Masters, all of our units all have passive data. There's a USB port on the bottom left hand corner of all the units. There's also one on the front of the VCC, and these hold all of the information for all the cooking processes. So it holds 10 days as standard, but then when connected cooking, it'll load up to six months worth of days for the course. Yeah, which is obviously really important for a chef or for a restaurant owner because if you know, someone has food poisoning, then you need to show that you, you cook everything to temperature and you put the house out. So it's important that they do that. Um, another question as well from Mark. So uh, does this work as a tandoori oven in, in an Indian restaurant? So we have uh, sort of different style of cuisines, and um, you've got various different options. So we do up to, I think it's 32 languages now, and you can change these in the settings. But this doesn't just change the language the units in. There's actually six versions of English and Welsh, and the rest of our British sort of counterparts. But it runs through, again, you come into settings, and it's at the very top. And by changing these settings, it changes things. So in Indian cuisine, they tend not to use sort of a grill. So we change the setting over to a tandoori. It gives you an additional option. But it also changes the way some of the other processes work, like braising, just to replicate a more authentic style and cuisine. So if you are looking at doing particularly just sort of tandoori cooking, we can change it over into a tandoori environment. Uh, yeah, that's time. So the food smoking as well, isn't it? You can buy extra for that. You can. Uh, another one of our accessories is the Vario Smoker, um, which is an external unit which basically allows you to turn your self cooking sensor or your comp master into a smoking unit. Again, you can build a manual program and run it through. So we do support work and stuff like this. But basically, you would get your unit, plug it in, pop it on a grid at the top of the unit, and fill it with wood chips. It takes about 20 minutes to fill the inside of the cabinet with smoke. And then from there on, you're ready to cook. So we could take something like a side of salmon, trim it up and cure it, and then wash it off for a really barren, pop it onto a tray. I tend to use a steamer tray just because, again, it allows that air circulation. And it can be if you pop just a little bit of grease proof as well at the stop it sticking. You could cook it on the probe, so it could go for a target temperature of say 55 degrees, or you could go lower if you wanted, and then bring it in at sort of 75 degrees. Once it hits that target temperature, it'll buzz. Again, if you wanted to just put it in and leave it sat at 30 degrees, so the minimum heat that we can balance through, and just allow it to smoke through for the amount of time. And it comes into doing that development. But yeah, pans, gallons, ducts, anything you need to smoke, there is the option of using that. So once you've done that as well, what would you recommend? So yeah, after using it, yeah, you'd use it a cleaning setting to take that away. So all the cleaning with the self cooking sensor is all automatic. It takes two different tablets. Here's one I prepared earlier: a blue one and a red one. And the blue ones look after everything inside that steam generator. So these are your care tabs, and this is why we don't need any water softening units or anything like that with the units. And then the red tablets do all our cleaning. So these are our workforce tablets. And again, after a strong sort of smoking session, there's going to be a lot of flavours infused and sort of into the sort of metal. So to clean it through, I'd use a strong cleaning cycle. Pop all the tablets in, shut the door. It takes about three and a half hours, so it's ideal to do overnight. 
but it might be if you need to that you give it a save just to help remove some of them, which is one of our eco cleans, um, which is basically like our eco wash. So it uses less tablets, it takes about an hour and 40 minutes, or an interim clean if you really push the time just to bring that flavor out of it. But yeah, I'd always clean it afterwards, otherwise you'll continue to infuse that smoke flavor back and forth. Yeah, other than that, does the uh, self cooking kind of tell you when it needs cleaning? It will tell you when it needs cleaning. So, but right down here in the bottom right hand corner is our little cleaning option. It'll start off with silver, as it gets dirtier, it'll move into yellow, and then finally it crosses over into red when it really needs to clean. There's two different bars. So, when we come in, there's a top bar and a bottom bar. The top bar is the really important bar that we look after, and that's everything behind this panel inside this cooking process. So, as we cook everything, we still got that steamer on, and just like a kettle permanently being on the boil. It's picking up any calcium, depending on if you're a high water, um, a, heavy, a hard water area. Thank you very much. My beautiful assistant on the side there. He's got cue cards and everything. It's wonderful. Um, but if you're in a hard water area, it gives you those sort of abilities to not necessarily need the expensive water softening systems. So they'll look after everything inside there. So they're a really important tablet. When to use them? I tend to just say if this bar starts to go up, it's saying that they're starting to pick up sort of a scale issue inside, and it's best to maintain the same top. They're a preventative, not cure to lime scale. So if used correctly, you'll never need to get a descale out or any of the expensive cleaning charges that come from the conveyor The bottom one will just communicate through how dirty the unit is. So this will just work on the system as running through. And then again, you've got the seven, seven different options from rinse without taps all the way through to strong cleans to give the units a clean. Yeah, so through the Connected Cooking, then, if I was a restaurant owner, can I tell how many times the chef's cleaned it in its history? So if I had a service card, I'd know if you've been cleaning it out of the Yeah, so Connected Cooking really just offers you four minutes in access to everything in the unit. You can have remote access, so if you were at home and you wanted to do programming, you could log in and sort of change it, or if it was your day off and someone was struggling with something, you could load it and load it directly for them. It also offers you the ability, if you've got multiple units on site, to have an overview of what every unit's doing. The other big benefit with it though is you can check on it at any time, but it's the HACCP data and the cleaning information that really comes through, especially if you've got multiple sites, it gives you a complete ability to see everything that's going on, and that's completely free. As long as the unit has the internet port on it, which can, again can be retrofitted by one of our service partners, you've got the ability to connect your unit up, the software is completely free, sign them in on connected cooking, and you can utilize all this data. Yeah, you can invite um, like service partners to log into it. If you ever did have a call, you can invite people in to have your service. You can, yeah. So, I mean, a, a really interesting thing. It shows that the kitchen equipment's sort of more intelligent than I am these days. Um, but if there's a problem with the unit and it recognizes it, you can set it up so it communicates with your service partner directly, and they can set it up with the right part, and they'll call you to arrange when you need to come and visit. So, it saves you having that problem if you get to a Saturday night and suddenly something goes wrong and it's a big issue, the unit's looking after and protecting itself, and then it just allows everyone to work better through an easier transfer of information and data. Yeah, and if you're not sure as well who your service partner is in your area, then you, we've got a list of them the gold dealer, so you can contact Kate's quick or open eight to late, so if you, if you need anything, or we can obviously find you that information, and get someone to log on to your restaurant for you, and tell us if it's open phone. Uh, yeah, so moving on, we've got another question as well from Sally. So I'm thinking of starting to cook pizzas in my pub. What are the be best benefits of using one of these over a pizza oven? So the big advantage of using this over a pizza oven is the fact that you've got more than a pizza oven. You know, if you buy a pizza oven, you can do pizzas. If you buy a Rationale Self Cooking Centre, we can do breakfast, we can do chicken, we can use it for improving bread, you can use it to bake bread, you can use it for pizzas, you can use it to dehydrate products, and you've got a variety of different other options. So we do do an accessory to go with the pizzas, which is our grilled pizza tray. So again, two-sided and covered in that trilax coating to keep it non-stick. One side's a nice grill, which is really, really good for fish, so things like salmon or sea bass. It gives them a nice colour. We put this into the, into the Rationale Self Cooking Centre, like preheat. And on the other side's flat, just like a big plancher or a pizza stove, and this will heat up. And then you can simply just slide them in and find your times. That tends to be about four to six minutes. It depends how thick you've gone for pizzas and how big they are, but you can just roll them through. So the different sizes of pizzas you can do, these are a one by one gastro size tray. So it's just what can fit across here, which is about 10 and a half inches. Any more than that, and then you start to get the overlap. You can get a baking spec which is wider, but then these trays don't fit into it. So it depends on the style that you're doing, but it needs to be within that one by one gastro to sit on these ones. You can get them two stack wide, so our 202 units and our 102 units, 
and you can load them in sideways, and you've got two side by side, and you've got the crossing for a larger pizza. Okay, can you see, um, I think that's finished So again, you know, rationale self common sense, you use the processes. I've not got to know when it's done, it tells me when it's done. So it's not that I've got to continuously keep thinking, reminder, timer on my phone, do I forget about it? Do I get distracted talking? And then suddenly everything overcooks. It communicates back through to you when your product's finished. So it's buzzing now to let us know it's finished. There are a couple of follow-on options here as well. So again, you can get more information about these with the question mark. But we've got the ability to remove the cold temperature probe. So it might be that we have something like a chicken thigh or a bigger bird or something else in there. We can move that probe over to the next product. Or alternatively, we've got the new batch function. So instead of going through the preheat, it'll just go straight through the cooking process and step it straight on. Just going to take the probe out, pop that back out of the way. And we can bring our chicken down. So we've got the two different finishes. We've got our skin side down where we've got a really nice pan roasting, and then we've also got ours that's roasted through. So we've pulled the product all the way through. Pop this on the side. Love it. So you can hear how tense and how hot that is, and it's really used that high temperature to get all that coloration on the product. Just check it to make sure it's come over our core temperature point because I did put it down into 72. So we can just run through. One second, there we go. Spot on. So let's just come up to 75 degrees. So we can take it off, and then I'm just going to do a few slices. Again, this is something if you want to see these processes, we do rational cook lines all over the country. Come along, speak to the reps, you can go and connect your cooking for information. Come along and have a look, have a try, see how good this chicken is, and that's where you really get the information about what you can do and how you can utilize the programs better. If you already have a rational, again, Rational Academy, and more information that comes through on these different processes. Just in addition to that as well, we've always got our rationale installed here, so if anyone wants to come to Kate's Click and, and learn about it, we can get a rationale rep to come and you know, show you it and go through all these processes again if you want to do it in real life, or you can come and put your meat in an overnight roast and come to it the next morning, and it's absolutely fine as well. We've got it installed for you. So you can bring your own food and they can actually have a, yeah. a trial run and a test again with all your accessories. Yeah, you've got yeah. Now. So we're, we're talking about the Christmas test centre, so if you are wanting to do that, you can contact us and we can book you in, so that's not a problem. There you go. Thank you. Um, a couple more questions as well. Yep. So, um, Sean, if you're interested in getting another rationale, uh, what's the smallest size for a pastry selection? So, we do a variety of different sizes. The smallest unit we do is the Rationale Self Cooking Center XS, which stands for extra small, which is two thirds gastro. So, it's still six shelves, but it is about two thirds the size of the six grid. Um, and that's the smallest size we do. Again, you can still use half shelves in there, or the smallest one by one gastro size we do is a 61, so a six shelf one by one gastro node. Um, but for more sizes and stuff like that, speak to the RSM, so our regional sales managers, and they can take you or show you a site where you can see a real application of that unit in practice and get a real understanding of what the possibilities are and also how big it is. But it's ideal for back bars, as I said before, we actually have people installing them into their homes now. Um, I'd like a self-cleaning oven in my home, um, one day maybe. But is the technology and the ability to go through all these different things, as long as it's got water and a power supply, you can have it on a single phase, the, both the excess and the 61, it just offers you that additional freedom. Yeah, is that, is that just self-cooking tent or is it Combi Master as well? You can get a Combi Master in the two-thirds as well. Yeah. Um, so we do do a small version of them, and you can stack them as well. So it could be that you put a 60, um, Okay, da, 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 da. struggling to think now. A rationale excess on top of another unit, and you can stack it through that way. We do stacking kits, so if spaces is an issue, you can go that way and sort of stack them all. Okay, so um, Jack's also asking, you know, any famous chefs who use rationale combi ovens um, for products? Uh, I mean, we are the biggest um, brand within the combi oven. We are the market leader. So we're all over the world. Um, just watch TV. There's a variety of them in the backgrounds of many kitchens all over. Um, loads of places will have sort of rationales. Uh, the list would just go on. Um, loads of them in London, which is a massive hotspot for us in the UK. But they are, they're all over the world. So America, China, and they really are spread out. We're a, we're a very, very big company. Uh, and that's why they sort of you know, have roles like mine, which is just in training. So again, we take all the information, and it's about supporting rationale customers for the life of the unit. So even if you've got a unit 
that's five, six years old and you want more training, you can come along to a Rational Academy at free, free of charge. Again, the cook lines, you can come and visit again. It's all free in there. Things like the chef lines, connected cooking, the apps, they're all free to Rational customers. All you need to do is just sign in and log in and you can have all that information there. Yeah, perfect. Um, we've also got a question from Wayne Long. So can you program all the recipes onto the unit? So you can program in three styles. So we can program the ICC. Again, this is just by coming into an ICC process and then selecting the program you want to save and then clicking the little save note at the bottom. You can save the intelligent level controls. So we build them the same way. Coming in, selecting the intelligent level control program and then clicking to save it. So at the moment we're on Steam here. So we go Steam, save it. Now instead of naming it a specific name, so being a product, we can also choose these as timers. So I could save it as two minutes, three minutes, and four minutes, and just have the ability to drag a timer down onto each shelf. So if we name this just one minute, press the tick to save that. We can come back in, and as long as it's built in the same Steam environment, we can tie them together. So we come into vegetables, and we can come into Steam, so it's exactly the same temperature. Select the time, we can save that. And I'll just call this one five minutes. Once those are saved, They'll appear in the little programs at the bottom down here. So as we grow this list through this training session, if we come into the intelligent level control, which we can access either by loading a basket in our programs, or alternatively just pressing the ILC logo in the corner. And now it won't actually preheat itself in this mode. So to access it, the first thing you need to do is just drag a button down, and it'll bring a yellow bar up that brings the temperature up. But it all cools the unit down if required. But we're going to press the bin, and then everything I selected will delete out. So we can remove everything that's inside that basket. And then we can add in our buttons. So we can add in our one minute, and we can add in our five minutes. We've actually got another one there. So Tom. And then all we need to do is we can drag them down onto our shelves. If we wanted to save this again, so that we don't have to add them all in, we can click the little note, select time together into a shopping cart, and then we can name it. So I'll just call this one Tom. Press the tick, and that's now saved together. So even if I delete them out, I can still access them as a big group. You've got the ability of transferring them as well. So if you have got multiple units or you've got multiple sites, just need a format and USB stick. I use four gigabytes because it's big enough to hold any info. The same way you take your hassle data off, plug it into the USB port lines on the side down here, put it in the bottom corner on the units. And then you've just got the ability to come into the self cooking center little unit, come down to the USB stick, and then do a program download. You can back them up on a computer, transfer them out, email them through, or with connected cooking, you can do it all remote. So you can have them sent to your base computer, and then if you want to roll out, so for multiple sites, or you want to send a recipe directly to it, you can just click a button and it'll send it directly to your rationale. You know, just re-update re and bring and load that program in. The final way of doing it is manual programming. So it might be that you don't like one of our processes, or you want to do something different, or you've got something very specific that you want to do. And for that, you can always build a manual program. So again, we come into our program notes at the bottom. And then there's two blank tiles at the top, blank manual and blank ILC. So we can also build the level control and control the environment specifically to our requirements. But if we press the blank tag, we can then name it. So it might be that we want to create a Yorkshire pudding setting. So we'll call it YP because I can abbreviate everything. Traditional chef, make everything short and select now the manual modes at the top. So we can start off with a convection heat. I'm going to take all the moisture away. I'm going to bring the temperature up to about 240 degrees to preheat that oil all the way up. And then I can press the little preheat option. And with the minor program, you can build up to 12 different steps so you can make it change the environment. So it might be that we want to use the probe to cook it to, say, 75 degrees, and then change the environment over to a steam and spray it out or different stages. But you've got complete control over the different steps you want to go through. So something like a vegetable crisp, we might steam it for 10 minutes on a really nice thin tray. And then we might take all of the humidity away and turn the fan speed down to use as a dehydrator. And then between about four and six hours later, it will drive those out. Again, a really good thing to do overnight. But you can dehydrate that as a product, come in and you've got a healthy, non deep fried sort of vegetable crisp that you can put onto different things. Yeah. And with the connected cooking, there's a lot of uh, different menus and sort of recipes that you can download from that if you want to have a look through it. Yeah, so, so we have, videos. that's a really good point. We have an inspiration section. So everything that we do as our team, as our RSNs, as our sort of directors, we upload onto the connected cooking panel. And this is just a big database. You can upload anything you want into this and go through. 
and this allows you to take that information through. So you can go on there, see the recipes we've done today, if you want to see how we'd be doing a little lemon sponge later on, the recipe's on there, you can rate it, review it, and have a look, but it's just a big online portfolio you can get this. Uh, it tells you everything, doesn't it, from the ingredients to you know, what's set and you're going to do it on. It's really, it's really information. It does, it gives you the information. So if you need support with things like connected cooking, contact Rationale. We can go through this, or you've always got your Rationale service partners, which you can get hold of through sort of your, your dealers, and they can support you through. We train as well our sort of service partners and our dealers so that they have the knowledge to help you through things. And there are things like the apps and the instructional videos and emails. But if you need to get hold of us on the very front of the unit, Again, that telephone number, or there's the email address. So if you email chefline at connectedcooking.co.uk, we can format, uh, sorry, we can send you the information you require for any of the processes. So it really is just communicating with us how we can help, and then we can support you going forwards with sort of developing either the connected cooking or any side of help that you need. Yeah, and uh, James also asked about the installation of the machine. So do you know what sort of extraction you'd need for it, even the condensate and everything? So again, Every kitchen is going to be slightly different, and it depends on what you're trying to do. We do do a couple, so if you aren't lucky enough to have an extraction built in, we do offer two different hubs, so the UltraVent and the UltraVent Plus. The UltraVent will deal with any steam and heat, and then the UltraVent Plus deals with all the smoke as well. So we can offer us an external hub to go onto all of our units, but the best way before you ever look at buying such an important and expensive piece of equipment is I'd always get a proper site survey done to make sure that it's the right power supply, that it's going to be in the right positioning, and to make sure that you're looking after this piece of equipment in the best standard. I'd always get a rational service partner to come and deal with all of that for the small price that it is for the site survey to make sure that everything works flawlessly when it comes in, and then you've not got any issues with your drainage and making sure that you know it's sort of the wrong um, height of pipes so that the water can run back. It's just best to get a rational service partner to come in, and they can then look after the unit for its entire life. They'll do all your servicing and look after all the important information going through that. Yeah, and it's important to know as well, if it's gas, you absolutely have to have extraction, don't you? And interlocking when you panels. If it's electric, you can use the condensate. Yes, you can't use yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, you do need extraction for that. Um, the other thing that Case Quick do is an install kit for the rationale. It's a fairly simple piece of equipment that you can easily install your rationale. Again, we do recommend it gets installed by a service partner and site survey first, but it consists of a tundish dish, which you need for the draining compression elbow and some copper piping so when the water comes out the rationale it's obviously going to be really hot yeah. so it needs to go through the copper piping first to cool down and then obviously into the plastic piping and into your drain so it doesn't burn your drain and um, if you want information on that obviously you can contact us and we can sort of put that as part of a kit for you so it's all sorted and you need to know which how long your drain is so again the site survey is really important but this is all part of the service package that you get offered with Rationale and sort of why we choose to work with our dealers and why we have awards for sort of higher rate dealers. So like yourselves, okay, quit being a gold dealer. You know, because you work with us and you help us to do the job to the highest standards all the time, it's just supporting that and giving it recognition. So there's different levels of dealers and different levels of sort of things. So it is worth looking at going through. But it's just about us offering and sort of the people that you're purchasing the units off giving you as much support as you go through. Um, Melody, that's about the electrical supplies on the ovens. Um, yep. Talk a bit about that. So there are, so most of them are three phase, but the 61 and the XS can also run on single phase. It just needs a higher amperage fuse, which I can't remember off the top of my head. But if you leave us your contact details, I can get you the information sent over for that um, with all of our specs and power, um, power supplies and load requirements. Yeah, it's important to mention it at the time of sort of quoting and ordering that you need to be single phase you need it to be because it's still to be single phase so it's very important you tell us before you order it so we can obviously get it configured for you rather than ordering a three phase it can't be done rated after that can it, it but that's it that's again why a site survey is absolutely priceless making sure that everything just runs through really slick that the installation that you get the right unit there are a lot of different options we make every unit um per customer so in the actual center and the built in landsberg just outside of germany um but each unit will have a name on it, and that name is the person of staff who built the unit. So just below the serial number on the side, so it was Manfred Wuth who built this unit. He built that from start to scratch, going through each of the components. So they're so proud of the units that they make over in Germany that they do put their names on them. So there's full accountability, so he will be very, very proud of what he does. But again, they can make anything. So if you need the doors on the other way, if you need sort of special things, we do marine options, we've got covered, you can get 
um, covers for the fronts for security reasons. You can have them so you can lock them away. There's a huge range of different sort of personalized options for each of the units. But to make sure that you get the right one for you, that's why that site survey and speaking with your dealers about what options are out there. And again, our regional sales managers to go through. Okay. I'm just going to turn this on to preheat. So we're just going to do a little bit of steaming. So again, just got some programs. I built this one together earlier. But we can just come into steam. And then all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drag the first item down. And then it's going to set the environment. So it's just going to come up to temperature. A few different little bits we're going to steam on. So I've got some Chantenay carrots. And also some squash. And then we've also got just a little bit of ravioli. So I've soaked this in water because uh, our pasta still needs water when it's cooking and it's going to get cooked in steam. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drain that off in a minute and then we can pop that straight into the self cooking sensor. You can do things like rice, noodles, and a variety of different products this way. And it depends on what sort of tray for what you're doing. If it's a dry product, so like dry pasta or rice, I tend to use a solid gastronome or a granite enamel tray. But then if it's something that we've already soaked, so like you've soaked your dry noodles before, then you can use sort of a steamer tray. So we want to perforate it to help that air circulation and steam get really round the products. And the so again, it will also let us know that it's ready to load. We can see all the steam that's inside that unit. Once we pop our trays in, load those in. Drain off the bottom of that one. And then all I need to do now is assign different things to different shelves. So we've got a pasta on shelf six, so I can drag that down. Alternatively, we press the button so we select squash. I can select that that's going on shelf four. And then I'll put the carrots on the wrong shelf, so I'm just going to press a little bin, delete the carrots off, and then put that back onto shelf two. And this is a really good way of utilizing these timers, which is something as simple as steaming. You, know, you can have all your veg prep. And it doesn't matter which chef's doing it, you're going to get that continuity and consistency of a good product out always. You know, and opposed to if I had, say, a big boiling pan, I'm going to spend a lot of time and energy heating that up. You saw how quick this preheated down. It was at 200 degrees before, 240 for the chicken. So I know I've had the door open, I was like, rest a little, but it's very, very quickly changed that environment over. You know, it took me 20 minutes, 25, 30 minutes to bring a pan up to the boil. I remember we always used to start the oil pans up, put them on the light, everything in the morning, which again is a huge gas expense. You know, you put in all that heat, you're paying all that money to go straight up into the extraction system. Then as soon as you come along with your broccoli or your product that you're cooking off, you pop it into the pan, the temperature in that pan drops out and it stops boiling. So again, you've already lost that temperature, so you've got a lid on it, the temperature comes up. If you're anything like me, if you haven't put a timer on it, you probably forget about it or you overcook it. Then you've got to get it out of the pan, so you come along with a slider, so you try and lift it out, which again can damage your product. Or are you carrying a big, heavy, hot boiling pan across the kitchen, which again is a manual handling issue, to pour it into a sink to cool it down. The advantage of using the steaming option, we can load it all in on the steamer, in our trays. We've got a consistent timer using the intelligent level control function, and we can just take it out. It's going to give us a constant product out all day long, and there's nice continuity. We'll just give you that. Uh, so we have got a, a couple of questions about delivery and, and things like that. So as you mentioned, because each other is built separately, rationale doesn't actually hold stock, do they? they it's no, built we, order, we so. build to order um, so that you get the unit you need. Yeah, so it's important. Let's just mention as well that Cape do hold stock with the rationale so that a lot of rationale customers who have already got an oven, if it goes down or it, you know, it gets condemned, it's not working anymore and they need a new one, we can replace it with, from our stock. So you'll get it straight away, you won't have any downtime. We can deliver next day and we can deliver up to Shetland Island um, up in the Highlands, it's absolutely fine. Do you have rationale partners up there? We do, so we've got rationale coverage. Of course, if you're slightly further out of the way, it might take a little bit longer to get out there, unfortunately, um, but you still qualify for all the same unit introductions and everything like that. But again, in the short term, there are things, I mean, the app is a really, really good thing. Um, just for all the easy questions that you need to know, so like programming that we've been through today, if you do it all the time, it's really, really easy. But if you don't do it for a while, like everything, it's suddenly hard to remember. So you can just watch them for a recap. You know, it's a really good thing. It could be cleaning, so you get new member staff, and you can just watch a little video that will instruct them on everything you need to know about cleaning and all the processes through. Yeah, yeah, and our delivery team will deliver the RSML as well in our own, our own vehicle fleet, so you'll get it put inside for you. So it's, you know, one less stress to think about when you get it delivered and you need it up the road straight away. It's yeah. 
Uh, I did have a question as well about the um, how you were cooking the breakfast. So obviously you're doing different sort of men, different orders, you could yeah. do different orders. So if you had uh, steak on one order and then ten minutes later a duck came in, could you cook them at the same time on the eye level control? Yeah, and that, that's what it's built for. You can really build sort of your whole service options through there. It allows you to use, as I said, you can either build as timers or a specific product. We've got a variety of different accessories that we can utilize. So just like the pizza tray, you can have the pizza set and loaded up. But we can also have sort of grilling options. So we've got our one of our Trilax trays here, which is our cross and stripe grill grate. And this again is just basically how we replicate a char grill. So you can load this from cold, but you'll get a better response if it is hot. But you can put your steak on. Tell it that you want to cook it on a probe to a certain temperature. So if we want it to an ambient rare, maybe cook it to about 54, and by the time it's rested up, it's going to give us about 58. Load it in, put the probe in, and then it'll hold when it's ready. So again, you could do burgers on here. It could be a really good thing to just assign. So you put it in, check on a burger, find out how long it takes, drag and drop it down. You could then have a different button for your bun. So you put your bun in if you wanted to have pancetta. Again, you could use one of the roasted and baking trays. Pop them in, get the coloration, nice crispy pan share that way. And you can build the whole burger and have different options. So you can have an add cheese button and assign another two minutes. But again, using things like the coffee fry, which allows us to do sort of convenience products. It might be that we have our chips in there. So we do chips, burger, and this. And it might just be that you do that in the afternoon. So instead of needing a chef in when he goes on a split, you can still offer hot food options. It could be a hotel, and you do it for the night call. So you build a nice, simple menu and just offer something a bit more than just cold sandwiches within that setting. You know, it's a simple system to use, and again, once it's programmed in, it'll just replicate and give you that continuity and consistency every time. So our first product was, so we've got our ravioli, so they've come out there. So we've got a little bowl. And again, I'm just going to build a little dish. But as I said, this could be, you know, it could be a nice bit of rice. We could have done a jasmine rice, so it all kind of like coconut juices and stuff, and it'll absorb that as it comes through. Just saves you that big sort of pan, you know. Effectively, we'd be looking at two pans here, probably because I wouldn't use the pasta one again. Through and through, so I get this scoop. A little bit of pesto. And a couple of leaves of garnish. So again, just a nice, quick, fast little pasta dish. Yeah. There are ICC processes for cooking pasta in large quantities. So if you're a school, you can put pastas in sauces. You put all the sauce in right from the very beginning, and it'll cook it through all those stages so that you don't need to sort of keep coming back. And again, it saves you that use of the pan. We'll wipe down so we can fill that. Thank you very much, Chef. Again, another timer, so it's just alerting us that the next product finished. I'm just going to take this out. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of this on the side, we'll build a little dish up for later, and then we can look at some finishing before we close today. So we've got a little squash, and we've just got a little minute waiting on those carrots. I've got a little bit of sort of sweet potato mash. So what we're going to do, and this is going to be cold, I'm just going to pack it onto the chicken breast that we had before. Take that off this plate. So we can do that one. And then we'll look at finishing. And I think it was a question before, you know, what unit should you go? The self cooking center really does offer you all these different options. It might not be that you need them every day, but they're in there. So you've got the ability to develop yourself. You know, you can use it as a proving oven and build through. So it might be the experiment making your own bread, your own sourdoughs. You know, you can use it as a dehydrator. So if you get a lot of fruit or you get a, a product that's sort of, you know, on its way out shelf, likewise, you can dehydrate. So it could be sort of mushrooms and dry out. You can put something like mushroom powder and things like risottos or. It just helps you manage that wastage rather than throwing it away, which at the end of the day customs your money. You can use that back into sort of your cooking processes. Add a little bit of that on there. Got a little bit of our squash. Slice the chicken up, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure it's not too big. Again, if I put a really big piece of chicken on here, it's going to take a long time to sort of heat up. So by cutting it down, we're going to speed up the time that we can reheat this at. So again, we've cooked it in a manner to help hold all that moisture in, nice and succulent and juicy. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to go fish and then we're going to look and bring it back in the quickest and cleanest fashion we can. And that's going to use a variety of different humidities and moisture. But it could be that you have a really good table in your pub, table 12, that now you can do the food up beforehand. Rather than having to stop all your service, it gives you the ability to pre-build it. And that just helps, again, take the stress out of the kitchen, but also give you a better continuity and consistency with your cooking. So we can just pop a couple of carrots on there. And then that one's ready for later. I'll send to my colleague. Again, just wipe some of this more. So we'll leave that on the side. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop it into the fridge here to cool down. And we can bring that back in a little minute. Just going to come back to the main screen, and the next thing we're going to do, we're going to do a little sponge. So again, one of my another one of my favorite processes is going to use the intelligence of the probe to cook this sponge all the way through. So we're going to come into baking, and we get a large variety of different processes in here. So for bread, cookies, and biscuits. Cream puffs and eclairs, which you can also use for Yorkshire puddings. Pizza settings, croissant and Danish, which is a really good one, and it helps prove them to extend the use. Uh, there is a proven oven for things like bread, and there's also a um, two bread option, one for crusty bread, one for soft, depending on what sort of finish you want with your product. We're going to select the sponge cake option, and I'm going to select to cook with the probe. So instead, now all I tell it is what coloration I want, and that I'm going to cook on the probe. And what it's going to do, it's going to use the intelligence there to cook the product to our final cook point. And it's going to tell me it's done. So rather than having to come back, put a cake tester in it, it needs another two minutes, come back, no, it needs another two minutes, and you get distracted or something happens and suddenly it gets overbaked, this is going to give it just like continuity, it's going to cook it safe. If I put a thick sponge in, it'll contemplate that, it'll work it out, and it'll make an adjustment all the time. So it really does give you that ability to just sort of run through and get a better consistency. Sorry, can I get any water? Oh, sorry. So he's going through preheat. I've just used it with our granite enamel tray. So I've just made a very simple lemon sponge recipe. Again, you can find this on Connected Cooking. We've put it into the tray. I've used a granite enamel. This is one of the great benefits of an accessory like this. It's much harder wearing. So the Trilax coating is a non-stick coating, so it can get scratched with things like metal. Trilax, um, sorry, the granite enamels are a much harder wearing process. So we get the ability now to sort of run it through. But instead of like a normal gastro, it's completely square. So instead of getting the wastage that we put on the corners where you end up trimming it up, it's gonna cook it evenly all the way around. Another big advantage with these trays is that they heat up and they transfer heat faster. So it helps you get a better coloration on the product. So unlike a normal traditional gastro where we'd have to put things like cling film and stuff like that, sorry, um, grease proof and stuff, non-stick ones have that non-stick coating. I always wipe these with just a little bit of veg oil at the beginning, and that just helps give them like a non-stick coat as well. So you'll see when it comes to taking this out, that it's nice and easy. I'm not having to fight with it, and we can just lift it through nice and simply. Uh, question from Lily there. Um, you cannot steam and grill at the same time in the same unit. So this is where it comes again to site surveys and seeing what your requirements are for what we can do. We can create one environment, and we manage that. We can manage that to be consistent, or with the ICCs, we can change it when required. So what we'd look at for that is using multiple units. So it might be that instead of maybe getting a 10, that you find it's a better solution for you to get two sixes. Or it might be a six and an excess, which gives you that ability to sort of mix it up. And that's, again, where things like the Combi Master or the Combi Master Plus can come into use. You might have a Combi Master Plus on Steam, and then you have a self cooking center, which you use for the information, the processes, and the programs. And you can take the information off that one and then utilize some of that in your Combi Master, just because it's a bit more technical to know what environments and temperatures things are. Another question that comes up as well with the uh, three uh, glass panels. What's the best cleaning material to use on the glass, on the glass when cleaning it? So, yeah, you've got three panes of glass now in the new rationale self cooking centres. When it comes to cleaning these, we can pop them forward. So, I'll just wait one second for that preheat and bring it forward. The main screen that's on contact on the inside of the unit will clean itself on its cleaning cycle, but the subsequent screens behind might not necessarily um, need cleaning all the time, but they can get dirty, bits of flour and stuff can get behind them. So when it comes to cleaning them, I just use like a washing um, detergent, namely no brands, um, and then like a soft sponge or a microfiber cloth. And you just want to make sure that one of the glass isn't red hot when you go to clean it, um, just because thermal shock can put stress onto the glass, but also it gives you that ability to sort of go through. So if we have a look here, there's two pins, one at the top, one down at the bottom, and that allows you to bring these doors forwards. So we can get behind both of them, 
we can clean behind these if we require. Just give them a clean and then give them a wipe. I'm quite OCD, so for me, if it gets all blurry and smudgy behind there and you're looking through your door and everything's messy, it's not great. So we just tend to use that just to allow you and just give them a wipe down with a bit of blue roll at the end to keep them nice and streak free. So just go pop this sponge in. Now because of the depth of this, we're going to need to use another part of the rationale that you get, which is the pro bar. So it's tucked away on the side here, and we can bring it across. It just hooks over, and what this is going to allow us to do is put the probe into the center of the product. Just going to bring it up a little bit, so we can do that just by sliding it as we go, and we can bring it up on that little bar. Because this is going to rise, and again, if you're doing things like muffins and stuff on it, just make sure that it's got the room for that rise. We can bring it across into our product, we take our probe, we pop it in, making sure that we're completely covered in product, and that we go all the way down. And again, it's going to use those six sensors to take the information off and continue cooking. As more of those sensors get covered, it's going to register, and that's how it works out how much is in there by volume. So if we did have a really thick sponge, or I was doing it a big one by one, say 100 ml deep gastro, it's going to take more of those sensors up, and that's how it's going to make an adjustment on how long it takes. So again, whilst we're here, we've got another piece of equipment, which is a barrier cooking sensor. So I can turn this on. And this is, so I just came over to Rationale. This is basically, it's hard to really describe it, it's like a multi-efficiency pan. So although it looks like a brat pan, it's nothing like a brat pan. It's got the same technology that we have in the cell cooking sensors of processes, programs, and different options. And it goes through a variety of different cooking stages. You can get the unit so it's under pressure, so it allows you to do different sort of cooking volumes as well. So they come in the 14 litre pans, 20 litre pans, 100 and 150 litres, and it offers you a wide range. So things like stocks, under pressure, you can take off nearly half your cooking time, and then you can bring it through boil down. So again, it just allows you to take, you know, traditionally we all use recipes so that we create the same ingredient, the same batch, and then by using the processes, we can manage the cooking so it's the same. So it just helps with that consistency. Because there's nothing worse you go to the pub, you have an amazing meal, you tell all your friends and family about how good it is, you go back three weeks later, the chef's changed, and the food's not as good. And unfortunately, being English people, we don't complain, we tend to just not go back. Yeah. <laughs> and that never offers the place the opportunity to improve it and rectify it, but by using these simple processes, you take out that like, human error, it relieves the stress out of the kitchens, and it can also help increase your production. Which again means your chefs can get a sensible working week, as they push towards sort of normality and 40, 45 hours work, you know, it, these processes allow you to reduce. So again, like the overnight cooking, don't need to come in as early. So you're saving man hours and labor, which also just improves everybody's quality of life as they go through working. Mm -hmm. It goes for chains as well, and they can get results, the same results for like if you a chain of restaurants, they can have the same for each restaurant, can't they? So it's, it's like similar for each. Yeah, so we do a lot of work with a lot of sort of um, key chains and stuff. Um, and it does, it allows you that ability to expand it out. So it might be that you've got one site and you're looking at opening another site. What we can do is we can lock down exactly what you do at site A and then transfer it to site B. So it gives you that ease of transferring without having to do too, too much training of chefs and moving around and the complexities of balancing two teams. You can use the equipment to support that and help you through. Yeah. Um, just to go back to what you saw with the uh, chicken dish that you're doing. So the chef could be in the afternoon prepping for the night time sort of, um, service. Would you plate everything up and then like blast chill it, or would you not plate it up and just have it ready to serve? So you can do it. You could either reheat it in gastro trays and then plate it yourselves. Yeah. They could reheat it separate items. And again, under the little finishing icon in the bottom right hand corner, we've got all our options. So you can hold in there. So it might be that you cook it, reheat it, or just hold it for service. But where we're looking at sort of plate finishing like this, you'd cook it, ideally blast chill it, because it's going to reduce the amount of water. If you cool veg down by plunging it into ice cold water, it can absorb that water, and then when it gets reheated, it releases it back onto the plate. So we prepare everything in the day, or possibly the day beforehand, which allows you to manage that wastage as well. Because you know, if you're cooking for 87, you can cook exactly 87 plates worth of food. Yeah, yeah. And it gives you that precision. Cook all your ingredients so that you're happy with them. Cool them down so you flash chill them, or just slightly undercook them to let them cool naturally in the trays uh, rather than plunging them into water. Then you can build your plates up and you've got a bit more time for that. So you can make your presentation look a lot better rather than, and I remember when I was sort of cooking in a hotel, 
you'd be stood at the hot plate, there'd be three guys, everyone would have a tray of an item, and you'd all be putting an item on, and you'd be passing the plates along, and everyone's trying to run around with hot trays, and it was very, very hectic, and very, very sort of last minute, and a bit of a panic, and suddenly someone's missed something, and then it's got to go back, and you're relying on becoming a very efficient, driven team to manage it. We actually did bring in the banquet service there, and it allowed us, so a chef and sort of kitchen board the day before, would go and build all the plates up, put the nice purees on, design and build them, and then put them into the fridge. The day or the time you need them, you just take them out, leave them to come up to room temperature if you're using the plating system, preheat it on plate banquet, put it in, and then insert the probe into the side of the trolley. And this just replicates the weight of the plate. Once it then heats the product up, it'll then bulls and it's ready to go. Then take it out, pop it under one of our hoods, and this allows all the temperature to balance out. So it's a really important stage that the rationale hunts. They need at least five minutes under there, and it just allows all the temperatures inside and everything to balance and to make itself equivalent. I'd always recommend trial running these dishes before you do it, just because it saves any hassle of trying to guess the times. And when you're doing that, just make sure that you always put all the plates on the rack. Again, it's really important it's under the hood that it's got those plates to balance that temperature out, but we can load them all up, and then we go through. You also need to put in your plate weights, so we can weigh our plates. So again, if you come into settings, you scroll down right at the very bottom, the first bar of general settings is a plate weight. And just select the weight and range of your plates in. But when it comes to things like finishing, we do have advanced academies that specialise just on finishing plates. But we also cover it both for cook lives and also at normal standard rational academies. So again, it's one of those things that we can develop with you and we train you to use if you want that training. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that the only limitation to that if you were banqueting and regenning your plates and you couldn't sort of have different steaks cooked at different so medium rare, rare, and well done, could you it just be what you'd plate it up? No, so it might be if you're doing something like a steak, because the finishing process to bring food from cold up to a temperature is quite strong and it's quite aggressive, it might be with something like a steak that we actually cook them separately and then we hold them in the unit. So again, it might be that you have one on hold, so you use something like an overnight roasting process. It can still be done with a little product, as we did today. It doesn't have to be sort of a big two, three kilos. We've got 750 grams, sort of a piece of the top rump that I use today. But it just allows for that ability, yes, yeah, so you can get them already and then hold them. That'll hold the temperature in them. And then as you go, you can just load the plate on right at the last second and put the sauce on and go. But opposed to putting 10 ingredients on or six ingredients on, just allows you that freedom to build it all up and just take a bit more time when it comes to plating things. And is there, a, is there a trolley that slides straight in or is that just a 20 there? Yeah, so it takes a trolley. You can get it for the tens as well. And there's a loading rack that goes in. It needs slightly different racks on the inside as it goes in. But it is, it's just a trolley that you can purchase, sort of, again, another one of our accessories to allow you to get more out of the unit. The reason that we don't put any of the accessories together and sell you one big pack is because, one, it increases the price, but two, it depends on what solutions or what problems or challenges you're facing. And again, this is where sort of your dealers, you know, us at Rationale, so our regional sales managers, our sales directors and everything, we can find the solution that best fits you and solves your problems. So it might be that you need to reduce the oil consumption or you don't have room for a fryer, or you've got to step away, so something like a combi fry basket would be perfect. It might be that you're going to look at doing pizzas in the evening, so you're a pub, or a nightclub, and you want to do takeaway pizzas as just an extra option, just to increase that revenue. It's a captured market, they're in there, rather than going to the takeaway at the end of the road, if you want to take a piece of that, rather than have to go and buy a whole piece from, if you've got rationale, you can just buy a tray. Then build the settings in, do the development work, and then suddenly you've got a pizza room. You can offer you know, quick, easy takeaway pizzas to people's houses. You know, as you said, steaks, there's chicken spikes, jacket potato spikes, there's smoking units. There really is an accessory from every problem that you can come across, and then we've got solutions to help you be able to do that and get through it. Just trying to think. There are other accessories as well, so we do tandoori skewers. So if it is that you want to do sort of cheese kebabs or different kebabs and stuff. We offer these, again, you can use them on a grill, so it could be similar settings, so we have steaks and we have kebabs. So they're all gonna get cooked in a grill, so we can have these pre-built up, drop them in, pop a timer on them. If you're not gonna remember them, it's gonna give you that consistency every time. You get that real ease of use. Again, there's just a huge wealth of different accessories to allow you to get more out of your unit. It could be that you're just developing it up, so you decide you wanna start proving bread, you know, and all that information, there's information on the unit about proving, but there's also information on connected cooking, there's information on the apps, and we've also got the wealth of the rationale team. You know, there's a number on the front of the unit, if you're really stuck, give us a call, find out some more information that way. But we really are about passing that information. We're a company of chefs, for chefs. You know, and we want to pass that information on and get you using the units to the highest level we possibly can. Yeah, I think that's a really good 
think it's fair to say, um, rationale after sales service is unmatched. Um, they'll, they'll always come there, they can talk to you and help you out with your units, and then they're always on the other line, like say 24 7 to check line. You do need help, it's there, isn't it? It is, you buy more than just the unit itself when you purchase a rationale, you're buying a service package that comes with it. You know, you've got access to all the service partners who can look after you, and they've got widespread all over the country. You can you get the relationship with your dealers through your purchase as well, and they'll support you on that side of things. You get a regional sales manager, you can get access to the corporate team, which is myself. But we are we're based all over the world, different countries, so Mexico and you know, all the way through all the Americas, all the way through the East, Russia, China. So We've got a great ability, so it might not be that I necessarily know the answer, but I've got the tools and resources behind me so I can go and find it out. You know, our national corporate chef, Hugh Davies, is a phenomenally talented chef. He's worked with rationales for sort of 12 years and there's very little he doesn't know. But again, we can sort of feed that information back into the lines, so we've got sort of, you know, European head chef, uh, corporate chef, and there's just sort of vast wealth of catering knowledge that we've got access to. So if you have a problem, even if we don't have an answer at that second, we'll be able to get you a solution for it. So how's our cake doing? So again, it's coming on here, it's made adjustment the time, it's had a bit more on. So it's got about 20 minutes left on its running time. So it's just going to keep cooking it all the way through and it's going to let us know when it's ready. So it's not one of those things that we've got to keep looking back at. It's going to wander itself through as we go. Once it does that, we'll talk a little bit about cleaning. So again, we'll come back to that. So there are the three style and rationale self cooking center units in a variety of different sizes. So everything from a little excess, it's 10 grids to big full 20 grids, and 202, so 41 by one gastro size. Again, each one requires a slightly different cleaning depending on your usage. In the self cooking center, we use two different tablets, which we spoke about before, which again I'll go over in a minute. But there are the two other options. So we've got the Copy Master, which takes cleaning in a manual aspect. So again, there's an information in the cleaning processes and cycles. We can spray it with cleaner, it'll then go through a steaming cycle where it cleans itself off using the fan as well, and then it'll drop itself into a cleaning mode. Then the next one from that is the Combi Master Plus, which takes tablets. So again, it takes the silver cleaner tablet from here, but it takes a slightly different blue tablet to look after the tank. So again, they both go inside the fan battle. For information on where tablets go and stuff, there is information on the app, but if you press and go to a cleaning program, so if we come into cleaning, and we come in to say strong, for example, It'll very slowly show you exactly where to take it, so it'll inform you to take all the racks out. Again, when it comes to cooling the unit, it's important to use the temperature down button rather than the hose to cool it. We tend to just use the hose for if I was, say, doing something like rice, I need to add a bit more water onto a raise, or again, if I wanted to rinse it out after a bit cleaning. That's where we'd use the hose. We don't want to use that to cool it down. It can damage the inside of the unit as well. So the panels on the inside here, especially from cave, to help that even cook it. So part of the high density control that we provide, it gives that even balance using sort of the steam generator and the big fan that pushes it around, which creates air chaos, which just keeps balancing that air as it runs through, and it keeps that heat even all the way through. So these panels are important that we look after them. So again, using the temperature down to cool down program or to put the temperature up, rather than using the hose, which can cause them to warm. You can also damage the internal light bulbs in these as well, through thermal shock, so glass and cold water when it's very hot can cause that to break. But again, if you do any damage to it this way, you can always contact your service providers and they can sort of rectify it through. But we try and train to get out of that, and that's why the unit introductions are such a big part of what we do. And we go out and we teach you exactly how to use the units and how to look after it. And again, all the information we connect with Cookie and the apps is there to support you all the way through. So you don't need, a, you don't need water softener, do you, with the self cooking sensor? The self cooking sensor, you don't need a water softener because of the care tablets. Yeah. So again, these are really little clever tablets and they're preventative to any lime scale. So we have got this kettle behind here that's permanently warm boiling up, coming back to the steam injection question from earlier. But these will look after anything that builds up there. We advise in a hard water area that it gets one packet a day. Um, but the easiest way to see this is if you come on to cleaning and you look at the very top bar, it'll give you all the information about what's going. So as that bar starts to go up, we need to increase the number of blue tablets that go in, and then the bottom bar is about the cleanliness of the unit. So you can make a judgment on that. If it gets really dirty, it'll pop up and say clean me now, clean me later. You can tell it that you need to clean it later if you are busy, but then just when you know it's available at the time, put it into a clean process and give it a clean through. Yeah, so does the copy master need software then? Yes. It does. Yeah, yeah, so they don't, have, the they don't have the tablets, so the copy master works on a cleaner yeah. okay. itself. But again, all the information for that is available sort of through our rationale for search partners and stuff, exactly what cleaning chemicals you need to use for it. But the big thing is, it's self cleaning, so we don't use anything to sort of scrub it out. 
and it should look like brand new for its entire life. There's a couple of other bits that we can look after. So on the inside of this bottom panel is just a little drip tray. We can wipe that one out. And there's another one on the bottom here, which you can disconnect. So I'll clip down. Sometimes these become unclipped, and all they need to do is be clipped back up. But you can pop it out with three black pins and unhook it, and that'll go through. And then finally, there's an air filter. So not on the 20 grids, it's on the back of the unit, but on all the other units, there's a little black cleaner filter. And this just stops the computer unit from overheating or getting any grease and dirt in there. So there's a fan that just pulls the air in. It's important to keep this clean. So we advise every three months that this gets clean. Just pop it through the pot wash a couple of times. It'll give you a really good rinse in through the sink. You don't need to pull the sponge out, leave it where it is. The important thing then is just to make sure that we leave it on the side to air dry. Once it's completely bone dry, that can go back onto the unit. So there's two little pins at the back. They just slide in, and then it just presses back up. And that'll just lock that back into place. So that's just really the only bits of cleaning you need to do, other than the front and wipe down and touch point to make sure that you have got sorry matching on the hands and handling the doors. But even the doors are designed so you can open them with your elbows and press them too. So they're designed for chefs to use without. We also do a different door lock, so one of the bigger doors where it locks across so that you have to pull the door on all the way around. They're designed ergonomically to be used in the kitchen because we will be carrying trays as chefs do as you try and get in and out. Just that bit more breathing. So can that air filter go through a dishwasher or a fluid yeah. not to? It's absolutely fine to go through a dishwasher, so just pop it through. Sometimes if it's dirty, it just needs a couple of times. Again, you can just give it a wipe with a soft sponge beforehand. It's just really cleaning it up and getting any dirt out of it or dust particles that it might have picked up. Yeah. So the, the other main difference is then between the self-cooking center and the combi master, and why you start to choose the self-cooking center over the combi master, what would you, what would you say the main difference is that? I mean, the main difference is the programming. Yeah. You know, the level of the information. Manually, they both work exactly the same, but all of the processes and programming, all that knowledge. Rationale gets through 30 tons of food a year in development work in Landsberg, Germany. We've got food scientists, we've got food nutritionists, we've got a wealth of chefs on the road, and all this information has been pulled for over 40 years now and put into all these programs and processes. So if you're looking at doing bread, if you're looking at doing pizzas, that information's there. You know, rather than going, well, what temperature is right for a pizza? What humidity should you use? That information's already given to you, it's installed in, and it'll change those environments. So again, like the intelligent level control, it just gives you the ability to drag and drop, and you've got that freedom to just carry on. It replicates a grill environment, so it's about 240 degrees, about 20% residual humidity. But it's all programmed in and it's not something that you need to worry about or go away and study and learn. The information's in there, it's in there in all the guides, and it just helps you through. Another really big one is the cleaning. You know, there's a really integral sort of cleaning system, and it takes those blue tablets and they really look after the unit. You can save a lot of money by not needing sort of the different stages that come with that of sort of descaling and sort of getting service teams out, changing water tanks. They'll look after all of those problems, and all you need to do is just apply the tablets when it requires them. Yeah, so would you ever recommend a combi master over a self-cooking center? Again, it depends on the customer's needs. So it might be that you know you only want to use steam, and you don't want the intelligent level control. So you're going to buy a combi master, not combi master. Um, sorry, not self-cooking center. And it is. It completely depends on what your requirements are. But the technology really does future-proof your kitchen. And for the little investment that is above a combi master, for me, it's an absolute no-brainer as to why it's worth it. You know, it could be that you're doing pot pastry, it could be you're doing this. Manually, they work exactly the same way, they're built to exactly the same high standard in the same factory, um, put for your customer order. So they're built side by side by the same people. But it just gives you that more information, it just allows you, you know, it's the difference between buying a car and then buying a top range premium car. You know, and, and the, the expense gap for that little bit of a jump. So things like the overnight processes, you can build manual programs on the Combi Masters. But it just gives you that. So we talk about process that can save you 22% on your shrinkage, but again, it can save on your man hours. It's an energy efficient, so although it's cooking overnight, it uses advantage of cheaper rates as well if you're on those tariffs. But it allows you and it'll maintain and hold its energy in. So again, you're just looking at making more money back out of your units, which makes you more financially sustainable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have got another question as well from uh, Salsa Jenny again. So are there any programs for vegan cakes or gluten free baking? So really good question, um, a really big trend, and I find the whole vegan thing really, really interesting at the moment, um, because it offers so many new challenges to how we cook and what we do about cooking and so on. They cook exactly the same way, or it might be that you just tweak something in the manual. But if you have a product that you're really struggling with, talk to us. It might be that we know a different way of getting there, or we use a different setting. They are just processes that go through different steps, so dehydrate through. So something like the um, 
the sponge cake, for example. We'll start off sort of at 165, and then it'll increase the temperature, and then start bringing the moisture down. It might be that because of the sort of change without using sort of either a gluten ingredient or using sort of a protein ingredient, we change the cooking parameters slightly, and it changes that. But talk to us, we can set something up manually. Uh, it really depends on the end finish. You know, the reason the settings have all the different options where you can up the coloration is because everybody wants a different end finish. You know, we give you a rough recommendation of where we would advise you to start, but it might be you know, the temperature or down the temperature. And the only really way to find that is trial and error. Again, the baking option can be a really good one for that. So an intelligent level control mode. But instead of if you're doing afternoon teas, it might be that you have more built in. So it manages the moisture and the humidity to the perfect environment ideal for baking. And then all we need to do is drag and drop our timers in. So it just gives you that flow. So it's afternoon tea, you've got four in for afternoon tea, two twos, and you can just drag, so scones, put four on the shell, you know, a different sponge, so chocolate sponge, drag it down, be a cookie, and drag them down. It just allows you to maximize that production without having to remember that suddenly you've got five, six different things cooking at the same time. What you know is what chefs do. You try and remember the eight different things that are going on, and sooner or later you forget one, it's inevitable that it happens, because you're trying to juggle all the balls. And it's a simple process that just manages that risk and waste, and makes you more financially viable, but also increases your quality and consistency. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, Melody's also asked about, about, about training. So, uh, any, can you have training at any point from you guys, or do you uh, just do these sessions for this, so the cook wires and the academies, so where you just go out to any customer that's got rationale? Or? It depends on requirements. So, on installation of the unit, everybody gets a unit, uh, unit introduction. So, again, just contact us when you register the unit, or if you've got sort of a gold dealer, they'll pass your details over to us so we can contact you. You know, it's our ambition to come and visit every unit that gets installed. If you're having particular issues, call us. So we've got a sort of training coordinator. Again, speak to the chefs, and we ought to make it time to come and support you when we can. Again, that's where things like the Rational Academies are really good. The problem is, in your kitchen, you're probably very busy. Finding a time slot that works ideally for everybody is normally quite a hard thing, especially when you've got multiple staff and you're trying to do cooking. So I'm always a really big fan, and I love running the Rational Academies because it gives you that time to sort of come along. It's about three hours, but you get the opportunity to ask the questions, you get the opportunity to sort of think about and try food, and it just opens up those avenues for conversations. You know, it can be quite hard if you come in unless you know exactly what you need to go, oh, well, what about this question, what about this question? So, you know, once you've had unit introduction, again, if it's not on the app, um, you can just run through and sort of visit those things through. Yeah, yeah. We've got three minutes left on the Three minutes left, so it's the final countdown. But again, you know, for me, that's what's so amazing about the self-cooking center. I'm not had to manage that. I'm not going over now, putting the probe in to check it. So it could be that I'm on with my next preparation job, that I'm doing the next thing I need to do, that we're getting ready for the next item, and so on. You know, and it really opens up your ability to sort of fly through. And um, not all the accessories. So there's a question just come in here from one of our team behind the board. Uh, not all the accessories do come in two-third gastronome. So some of them do, some of them don't. So like the tandoori skewers don't come in at two-thirds. Um, we are working on it, but there's different restraints and they take time, so just to get them absolutely perfect because they won't release them before they're ideal. Or there's just not necessarily a requirement for them at this moment. So, you know, it's one of those, if you talk to us about needing something, then we can look at finding solutions and sort of as a company, we look to evolve and grow with you. Um, but with all the accessories, again, speak to the dealers, speak to our regional sales managers, give us a call, all the information's there. Again, it's online, so you can get the access to that information. Just back to the training and everything you were mentioning before, it's so important when you get your rationale to register. And I know you mentioned it, but we do get a lot of customers that don't register. And I think you know, your warranty is not registered, the rationale don't know where you are, so they can't offer you the training. So you do need to register. And yeah, that's so a great point. You know, we offer yeah. two year warranty yeah. on everything except for the door seals and light bulbs, and, and that covers everything inside the unit, uh, except for malicious damage, obviously. Um, but it does, it allows us to work with you. You know, you're not just buying a combi of. You know, you're buying a rationale, it's a premium product, and with a premium product, we provide a premium service. You know, and it is, you get that reaction, and you get that continuity, and you can get that customer action with us, so you can just get out what you need out of it. You know, we're not here as a company to sell you it, take your money, and then run. As a company, they've been about now since 76, they made the first one, and we set up in 73. All the way through, you know, the board is so passionate about making sure that we can deliver the highest quality service and product in the market. That's why we're the market leaders, I feel. You know, because we do it, you know, with the German efficiency that they're so renowned for at the highest level and everything, we're trying to permanently push for perfection. Yeah, 
you know, you're only getting combiism, so it's not, you know, you're not specialist in every single area, you're specialist in combiism, so it is, you know. Yeah, so, so we specialize in that combium sector, and now also sort of in the BCC, we also do sort of this multi-efficiency pan. But it's the same technology, just brought over into a different style of cooking. So there's a nice crossover between the units, so you can do wet dishes in the rationale, you can do wet dishes in the barrio cooking center. It was only the other day I was using the barrio cooking center to prove bread. The chefs are quite ingenious. Um, a nice place over in Leeds. But it gives you a variety of different challenges and options, and it depends on your menu. You can write your menu around the equipment, you can fit in. So, our sponge is now full, so let us know it's finished. Again, we've got the option to continue with time or we could do a new batch. So, if it was that we had a bigger sponge, we could add a bit more time on. I'm just going to take the probe out. I know it's going to be perfectly cooked because the rationale self cooking sensor cooked it all again, it's recorded all that hassle data. So, we can bring this across that, suck our probe arm away, and just bring our sponge down. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to spike that now, and then we've just got like a little lemon drizzle to pour over the top. Unfortunately, this isn't my blue piece, so I didn't prepare one earlier. Um, but what I'll do, I'll just take a little slice of this whilst it is still warm, and then we can have a little look at it. So again, it's fine to use a knife in sort of granite enamel trays, but we'd never use them with any of the roasted and baking trays or anything that's black and covered in trilax. Take a little slice out of this one in the corner, and then uh, just press it on the sides just to unstick it from there, and then we can just come in and lift it. So we can take our first piece. And then we've got a little lemon drizzle coating, so just icing sugar and lemon juice. And we can just drizzle out and I'll just dress the rest of this up. We did this little dish before, it's had time to cool now. Again, before looking at any finishing, it's important that we give it at least 20 minutes or the plate comes up to room temperature. There's no actual water comes in on the steam, but it is going to push it through the unit. So if there is some cold in there, so like going back to the glass question, the glasses are cold when they go in, it will condensate naturally onto them and that will create moisture. So we can come into finishing. Now instead of doing it on the plate banquet, because I've got the trolley, I'm going to use the intelligent level control version. So I'll come into plate salad cart. You can select the humidity depending on the dish. Most of these elements are quite wet, but I still got that roasted chicken in there. So I'm going to leave it on the average and the middle setting. But if you've got a dry environment, well, the temperature's too hot in the cooking cabinet. And as we talked about before, I'm going to cool it down using the temperature down. So a little blue arrow appears here. If you leave the doors closed, it will cool itself down naturally. It'll put water in there in the back of the cabinet just to help it cool. But what we can do now is we can open the door. It's just going to use that fan as you can hear to just blow the temperature and the air out of the cabinet. If you haven't got any heat sensors here, that's something to always be wary of. Just because if you have got a heat sensor, it's going to blow that heat out. So, what I do there is cut the door a little bit and allow the heat to go up into the extraction mode. But because we haven't got that, I can open the door and just hand it that temperature down. Once it comes up to temperature, it'll turn the fan off and ask us to shut the door again. Right so, it's going to buzz down, let us know we're ready, and then that's going to hold. So again, I'm just going to pop a little tray in. So I just used one of our perforated roasting and baking trays here. And this is ideal for things like bread, or so if you've got like pre-baked stuff. Again, it's going to just help that air circulation around. If you do things like croissants on these, they can sometimes expand into the little holes. So again, I'd probably recommend using a flat one. But these are really good for if you are doing like pre-baked bread rolls or anything like that, where it's like par-baked already. And this will just help you get it in. So we can load our shelf in. So I'll pop that in on shelf five there. And then we've got our product. So I'm just going to pop the whole plate in, and then I'm simply just going to drag and press our timer down, and that signs it in. Eight minutes is going to be a bit long for this, so having done these sort of things regularly, I'm going to give it just six minutes. And I know we've only got one plate in there, but if you imagine a pop service, we've got 15 in there, we've got 20. You know, you can go forwards and backwards each of the shelves and run them through. Again, you can get the plate racks, which save you from some much higher numbers, but it does just give you that ability to sort of run through a service very, very quickly. You know. A big function table, especially like Christmas, it could be that you have all your veg prepared on here, you use the rationale to bring the plates back up, and then you just serve the turkey, which you heat up separately onto them at the last minute with a bit of gravy. 
Okay? It just offers you a different style or a different option for particularly hectic services, or if you know you've got a particularly big group coming in with a pre-order. How is this going to be? Oh, More it's very nice. That's my favorite. <laughs> I've got a sweet food, so you know, that's really nice, and it's, you know, it's cooked really well. It's really well. Um, if anyone's uh, got any more questions, it's time to ask it now. I think it's your last dish that you're doing. Yes, yeah, so this will be our last dish today. Um, as we were saying before, we're going to come back and do another training session uh, on the BCC, so we'll show you all the capabilities on here and the different cooking options that you can have doing that. Um, yeah, if there are any more questions, um, we pop them in. If not, we can just look at sort of the last little bits and just recap over the rationale of our cooking centre. So again, coming back to the dummy panel, We've got that main interface screen. So this is what you sort of get when you purchase the rationale. You get your three manual modes at the top, and they run through basically all of your simple cooking processes. So you've got steam, you've got convection heat, and you've got combination. You can control the humidities and the moistures of everything that you need exactly on here to the percentage of a degree. Again, we're sort of like the Combi Master and the Combi Master Plus. We offer it to about 20% degree. So another benefit of purchasing the self-cooking sensor, you can choose the exact percentage of humidity or moisture you want in at any time. We can also come down, we've got our top 10 in the middle, so the big yellow button is our top 10. So the rationale self-cooking centre learns with you. So if you do things over and over again, it learns with you. You know, once you do things, it'll remember your top favourite. So my top favourite dishes on here are steaming, baking and grilling. And because I keep using those same ones over and over again to demonstrate on the dummy pan, it knows that, it knows what I'm going to do. It'll also learn your settings, so if you keep programming in the same ICC without saving it, it will learn what you want. So after about three times doing the same thing, it'll go, oh, we're going to do that. So it is trying to help you and just make things speedier and faster all the way through production. Then we've got our intelligent level control options. So in here we've got our levels where we can cook at different, one, one temperature, but we can cook different shells with different products on. So like breakfast for example, but it could be a burger menu, it could be a grill, it could be a tandoori oven, it could be a pizza oven, it could be a plate finishing system. There's various different things that we've got for serving containers, you can use it for holding, and it gives you this whole range of different possibilities and different environments and knowledge that you need. Finally, we've got all our programs, and then next to that we've got our cleaning options. Right at the very bottom we've got our little self-cooking centre, so this is our um, unit with all the information. As it runs down, you can set your date and time, really important for all your HACCP data. You can choose whether you've got Celsius or Fahrenheit, so you really can personalise your units to your requirements. As we come down, we can come into all the HACCP data and download in all the information here. So you can download your program. So if you haven't got connected cooking, just a USB port. Once you've built them, download them, if you end up with the second site, or you end up with the second unit, or you just want to back up on your computer, or you change jobs, then your programs, you can take them with you and all that information comes with you. If we keep coming down, we can come into acoustics. So again, you can turn it up and down. So you can select the little alarm on the side. You can turn it up and you can also turn the unit down. And we also have the ability to select different tones. So for example, if I come into end of cooking time, I select the melody, you can change it to one of 13 different noises. So if you have got multiple units, if you've got two units, you can assign them through. There's some wonderful Christmas music at 23 for anyone who's always excited for it. Um, but if you get problems, if you're unsure, if this gets stuck on, or someone puts it on for fun, you can always contact us to change the setting over. I'll change that back before it gets rather annoying quite quickly. Um, but it is, there's a variety of different alarms and so on that you can go through. You also can get all your information right at the very bottom. It'll tell you what software version. And again, when you buy the Rational Self Cooking Center, we give you free software updates for life. So either the service partners can do them when they're out, we'll do them, um, so the Rational employees will do them when we're out on the road, if we come to visit you. But also you can download these on Connected Cooking. So you don't actually have to have your unit connected to use Connected Cooking. It's just our online social platform where we transfer all our info. So we're just talking about trace facts. We're talking about different units and options. We're talking about training academies. We're talking about cook lives. We're talking about cooking recipes. We're talking about training videos. Everything that you could need to support you can find through Connected Cooking Online. All you need is an email address and you can sign in. It's completely free and that logs you all through to all that information. So again, we can come down. It will always give you a serial number, which is also on the side of the unit if you need that. And then there's also the number for chef line. So if you need to get hold of us, and you've lost the number off the top here, it'll be right at the very bottom of your self-cooking sensor with the information on the chef line. And below that is also the service partner number for rationale. So if you need to call us, or you can contact your dealer to get the information. So as we were saying, okay, quick here, one of our gold dealers, so they've got a really good reputation, especially with all of our um, service partners, just getting the jobs done quickly and efficiently and passing that information on. 
So does that tell you then when it needs a software update or? So if software updates come out, it won't tell you. If you've got connected cooking, it'll automatically recognize that there's software out there that's been updated and can prompt you to do a software update. Otherwise, it's just one of those, go on to connect your cooking, see what the latest version is. So as you can see here, we're on 7-00-8.5. So as you update and as you go along, and that just gives that information. So these can make changes. Sometimes it's just little changes to the manuals that we do because we've got more information to pass on to you. But sometimes it can be changes to processes or programs. As I said, we get through 30 tons of food a year, which is a huge amount of food development. So we try and find exactly the information. If we find a better way of doing it, we pass that information on to you for free. Yeah. You know, there's no charge for updating or anything. We're not holding information. The company policy is to just pass that on so you get more out of it. So we've got a chicken here. So we just had that back through. So we've regenerated that. And that's brought that back to temperature. And it's ready to go. So it's as simple as that. Rather than having to run around heating all these different elements, you can just do that develop work and find out. Pop it. So. Okay, yeah, just a couple of quick last questions. So, uh, how much money do you think you'll save using a gas compared to an electric? Um, again, that's something we can look at. Uh, although gas is cheaper per um, unit, electricity can give you more heat. So it depends really on what your sort of requirements are to where sort of you're at. Also, what you pay for electricity and gas can have a huge sort of impact on that and how you're cooking. So that one's uh, one of those where we'll come to sign with you. And again, the regional sales managers can sit down and look at what the challenges are specific to your site. It's not about a big company where we just do one flat scope and that's the answer for everything. We'll always try and tailor it and customer it to you. You can download all the reports as well. So if we come slightly further up on our menu, if we come to the little e, it'll give you the energy efficiency. So it tells you exactly how much electricity or how much gas it's using roughly for each process, and that allows you to cost out your production cost for every dish you make. Exactly, and if you're thinking of, if you haven't got the electric three pay, you're thinking of going for gas again, you need gas in to lock in. And so obviously if you've not got that already, then that's going to put up an additional cost on the final unit, isn't it? So you do need to consider that when you think about right, buying a rationale. But it is, you know, it comes back to service partner. Yeah. You know, get a site survey, get us out, and we can go through it. I know it's a little expense, but it really is worth it for just seeing exactly how and what you need to make sure that we get streamless, sort of effort free sort of installation with no problems or hiccups. So we'll they'll look at how they get the unit in, how they're gonna put it, where its waste disposal is gonna go, and make sure that you're capable of holding all these things. You know, we install them on third floors, fifth floors, twenty second floors, you know, and various different challenges. It just helps everything run through rather than them sort of being delivered curbside and then sort of your service partner come in and find them that they can't get in and they've got to take a window out. It just allows everyone to understand exactly how the day is going to go and just gives us that ability to sort of transfer that info across. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, one last question then. So can you interrupt a cleaning cycle when it's uh, mid-cycle? What happened if you did? So I would never interrupt the cleaning cycles when they're on. The chemicals are really, really caustic. So we'd always say make sure you've got your PPE, so a pair of gloves on. If you do interrupt it, it'll have to go through a 30 minute rinse cycle. So again, those tablets are really caustic. First thing it'll ask you to do is take the tablets out. So again, make sure you've got gloves because they are hugely caustic. And then it's gonna go through a long cycle just to make sure that you've removed any leftover chemicals inside the unit. Um, but yes, you can still open the door when it's on a cleaning cycle. So it's important to make sure that it doesn't get interrupted. But if there is a power cut or it does get turned off, it'll come back through an important stage. Yeah, so then if you shut the door again, would it start from where it left off or would it, you just it start It depends again? how long and it depends where the system's yeah. up to. If it needs to reboot because it's not comfortable where it's up to, it'll reset itself and go yeah. through and walk. It's good at itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's, I think it's just best to do it at the end of the night, isn't it? And really yeah. just do it overnight. It's designed to be cleaned overnight. Yeah. So again, another thing we're thinking about when you look at electricity versus gas, with gas you'd have to leave the extraction on to utilise that. Mm -hmm. But three and a half hour clean. You know, we can put the tablets in, shut the door, go home, come back in the morning, you've got an absolutely brand new unit, the door's absolutely pristinely clean inside. And that's sort of the big advantage of using sort of a cleaning system that works overnight like that. Yeah, that's really good. So is that everything from That's everything from my side. Yeah. I think that's covered all the questions that we got. Thank you very much from me at Rationale and sort of Rationale as a team for your time and your great questions this morning. Thank you very much to Kate Quick for allowing us to host this and allowing us to support them in sort of showing what great sort of operation they are. Yeah. And um, yeah, we'd like to say a big thank you for everyone for logging in and asking your questions. And if you've got any more questions, of course, you can ask us at any time. Like I say, we're open 8 to 8, so on the phone, you can ask us. Um, we are going to be doing more of these live stream events, so if you've got anything that you want us to test or new products out in the market that you want us to, to you know, do training on so you can learn all about that, then of course, you can always comment or uh, message us on Facebook or you can ring us. Our number is 01229 48 000 if you want to get a hold of us. Thank you very much for listening.
Thank you.